Uh, some of you may know that uh, I've been a chair of Sustainable Lexington uh, for the last 10 years. The Board of Selectmen appointed me to be chair of Sustainable Lexington. They were looking for some guidance on what the town should be doing from a climate perspective, from, a, from an energy perspective, from an environmental perspective. We've had a pretty good run for the last year. Some of you folks may know I, I was just being interviewed by uh, Colonial Times yesterday that I've been writing a column for the Colonial Times for the last six years called All Things Sustainable. So most people think of me as the sustainability guy, but the reason I moved to Lexington, I've been here now for 35 years. My wife and I raised two children. They've gone through the schools from K to high school. They're out of college now. They happily live in the area, so we get to see them on occasion. Um, but the reason we moved here was because we're interested in educational excellence. That's why we moved to Lexington, not to mention that it's a beautiful place. And when we looked around, we also found that the town was extremely well managed from a financial perspective. So it was a great place. We got the fabulous education at a price that was affordable for all. And so that's sort of like where we are right now. Again, we're at a point right now where we need to be building a new high school. A lot of you folks may not know this or not, but we have a 1952-53 high school. And that was probably the biggest investment the town made in the fifth in a, in a generation when we built that high school. We're now focused on the same thing right now. About six or seven years from now, we expect we're going to have to build a new high school. Some folks right now are saying that's $300, $400 million. We know that those numbers are real because Arlington is two years ahead of us on this path. They've just gotten their uh, bill for their high school, $305 million. It's a 1,725 students. We're a bigger town. We're going for 2,600 students. So if you can do the math, it's pretty easy. 300 million, we're going up. It looks like 450 million. Now the state will pay about 150 million of that. That leaves us with 300 million dollars we're gonna to have to come up with in the next seven years, something along that lines. So when you talk to the other folks in town, a lot of folks are quite concerned about how they get to stay in town. You know, my kids are out of school. I may be on a fixed income. I'd like to stay in town. This is the beautiful town. This is the place I want to be. How do we make that happen for people? So it turns out, when you look at the numbers, for those of you who know me, you know I'm a data-driven guy. I'm always looking at the numbers. That's how we make decisions. But I'm kind of like motivated by the heart. Why do I want to do this? I want to do this for educational excellence. You look back 30 years to the annual report in 1987 compared to today's annual report, which is the 2017 annual report, you'll find that commercial tax revenue in 1987 was 31% of our tax revenue. If you look at today's numbers, 17% of our commercial tax revenue. So we're almost half in terms of a diversity perspective. And you have to ask yourselves, what kind of town do you want to live in? When I decided I wanted to live in Lexington, it was seven years before I met my wife. I knew this was the place I wanted to come, where I wanted to raise my children. And happily, my wife agreed with me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so uh, I looked around and at, the, at, the, at the other communities in the area, absolutely convinced Lexington's the best place to live in the whole Boston area. You look at Belmont, there's no commercial tax revenue. Basically, the residents have put all the burden of everything that they do in the town on their shoulders. You look at Burlington, Burlington has made the other bet. They've got the mall and lots of retail development. It's a different kind of community. And so I said, Lexington's the place we want to be. But for the last 30 years, we've been sort of moving away to more standing on one foot, standing on that Belmont foot of all residential support. When you... So... One of the things that the Board of Selectmen asked us to do is put together a long-term plan for um, uh, what we're going to be doing with our buildings in Lexington. And we put together a 25-year plan, <coughs> put together this task force, this, is, uh, this Getting to Net Zero Emissions Task Force. It's a 25-year plan, and we brought in some of the most important stakeholders in the town. we got the three biggest commercial property owners in town, Shire, which is now called Takeda, for those of you who haven't yes. followed, <laughs> and uh, Boston Properties and King Street Properties on our task force. We've got residential real estate folks on the task force, but probably really interestingly, in Lexington, you can always find probably the nationally recognized expert on anything in somewhere <laughs> in the town. Not the international. <laughs> right. And so one of, the, one of the architects on our task force is a guy named Paul Lucas, who is 
who's internationally recognized. He's written books on how to revitalize dist commercial districts. He does it in, in, in Europe, in China, and, and here in the United States. And he suggested that we ought to take a look at Hartwell Ave and how we might be able to revitalize that. And when you start digging into it, you find out that Hartwell Ave were generating about $8 million in commercial tax revenue from that area. But it's a 1950s area. Most of the buildings there were built in the 50s or 60s. And it kind of looks like an industrial park from the 50s or 60s, a small buildings, one-story buildings. And guess what? It turns out when you go talk to Boston Properties, when you go talk to King Street, King Street Development, they say, millennials don't want to work there. There's no place to get a Starbucks. You can't have a beer after work. There's no place to drop off your dry cleaning. There's no transportation. They say, if you can fix these problems, give us some ability to zone in a way that we can have um, some services out there and give us a way that we can do this in, in a way that we can get some more public transportation in there. Give us a way that we can attract biopharmaceutical. Now, the Economic Development Advisory Council has been working on this for a while. What they tell me is that the biopharmaceutical uh, companies are paying double the taxes per square foot of a regular old office space. And it turns out the biopharmaceutical companies, because they have labs and because they have production facilities, they have far less people per square foot. Mm -hmm. So the idea is, the idea is, if we could double the square feet in a way that's consistent with the comprehensive plan, in a way that brings in biopharmaceutical and does it with some more services, we can come up with, say, if you're quadrupling the tax revenue from the area, eight to 32, that's $24 million. It turns out, remember the high school we're talking about? If we get to build this high school in six years or seven years or whatever, that's gonna be $25 million in new taxes. And so if we can do these things at the same time, it's going to take a long time. We have to do it in a consistent way with what the planning board is suggesting. But, and uh, the idea is we might be able to turn this ship in such a way that we can accomplish both of these things at the same time.